What is up everyone, Munching Orange here and welcome to Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's been a bumpy road for Pokemon fans this year, but today we finally get to find out what the 8th generation has in store for us. Though it's not quite our first experience with Pokemon on the Switch, Let's Go was not exactly what I think many people expected from Pokemon on a console, but Sword and Shield are a lot closer to the traditional handheld games we've known and loved for years, and I can't wait to see their full potential as we kick off this new adventure in the Galar region. Whoa, what is happening? Are we on YouTube right now? Okay. Immediately we got starting off with a cutscene. And we've got Chairman Rose. Welcome, one and all. Welcome to the wonderful world of Pokemon. Oh, we actually have to hit A? The first one went automatically, so I was a little confused, but... Our beloved Galar region is a wonderful place with thriving nature, beautiful cities, and many Pokemon with which we share our lives. As you know, our society is able to thrive. With Pokemon? What the heck is that? Thanks to the help from these mysterious creatures that we call Pokemon. Yes, Pokemon are all around us, in the sea, in the sky, and even with us in our towns. Nothing we haven't heard before, just kind of weird not coming from a professor this time around. And those of us who choose to raise and train Pokemon to do battle and compete, we call Pokemon Trainers! I am so distracted by that elephant thing right there. And the people are going nuts for it. I mean, it is pretty cute though. Oh, but I'm getting carried away. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rose, and it is a pleasure to be here. Now turn your gaze to the Galar region's greatest Pokemon trainer, your undefeated champion! It's time for Champion Leon's Exhibition Match! Oh, this man gets his own fireworks show and everything! And the crowd goes wild! Yo! This is actually getting me really hyped right now! Let's go, Leon! Strike and oppose too, okay? Whoa, who is that? Exhibition or not, Leon, your pristine record is about to end when I beat you here today. You know I don't lose battles, Rayhan. Charizard, Dynamax! Is it really happening? Charizard Dynamaxing right off the bat? Okay, he should be burning up the entire stadium right now. I don't know how Dynamax works, but Pokemon Sword is here. I guess the... Swords out of the bag. I am going to be playing through Pokemon Sword version, which I think I've mentioned a lot in previous videos. But now here we are at our hometown with little Wooloo starting us off. And Hop actually hopping his way over to our house. Whoa. For once, the game doesn't start in our room. And our trainer has a smartphone. What is going on here? Hello, hello! Yo! Oh, that's your Flash new phone, Orange. Flash? Is that like a British term? I'm already so confused. Were you watching Lee's exhibition match on it? But you can't cheer him on with your hands full. You know, the only way to properly cheer on Lee would be with his famous Charizard pose. Oh, so it wasn't a peace sign. Hop, didn't expect to see you here today, dear. Isn't this the big day? Yeah, that's exactly why I came running over to get Orange. Never mind watching the match now. I've got it recording at home anyway. I record all my brother's matches. Oh, so that's why he was on YouTube. But it looked like the desktop version, not a mobile version. Come with me, Orange. He should be here any minute. And Lee always brings presents when he visits, so I wouldn't forget that bag if I were you. Now I've got to run. See ya at mine later. Alright, see ya, Hop. And is this how our journey begins? Our character blankly staring off to the side? Yes it is, so stand up, let's go trainers! This is so cool. I mean, I realize I'm two seconds into the game, but I already have the biggest grin on my face right now as we have a little sleeping Munchlax here in our living room. Wake up, it's time for adventure. So let's venture deeper into our house. And our mom, or should I say mom here, has a pretty unique look. 
Rushing off in that state, Orange, didn't Hop say you should bring your bag? I saw it last in your room, and don't forget to grab a hat for the weather! Alright, Mom. Taking care of us as always. Where the heck is our room though? I thought it would be that door, but I guess this is it over here? Oh, there's no upstairs to our house. For once, we grabbed our dad's old bag. Confirmed, we have a dad. I would not be surprised if he somehow shows up later in the game. Or maybe he went on that fishing trip and never came back. But here we go, we got the hat and we get the adventure guide. Open the X menu by pressing the X button. Wow, isn't that great? Uh, I see that there's a Galar region map over here though, but I don't think we can read it. Uh, we got a plush of the Pokemon Pikachu instead. Super soft to the touch. Uh, we also have a Nintendo Switch, the latest video game console sitting by the telly. So if you can't tell already, we've got a lot of uh, British slang, or not really slang, but terms that they would use like mum, and of course, telly, which is brand new. Your mum bought it so that you could use your game console. That's a little bit far though. I don't see any HDMI cables running to that thing. I don't know if they have like a wireless switch of some kind in the Pokemon world. Maybe they figured out the technology at this point, but here's our bed. Uh, which we can't get in, like in Sun and Moon, for some reason you could go to bed and Meowth would come and scratch your face, but don't you look like a treat? I knew that bag would suit you! Now hurry along! Hop is waiting, isn't he? I just realized she did not say we look like a treat, she just said look a treat. I am not used to these UK terms at all, dude. <laughs> Remember, no going into the forest for the two of you. I love how she's got the glasses though, I don't know. This might be one of the best looking moms in a Pokemon game. Not like that, but... Uh, one really cool thing about these games is the mom actually changes appearance based on your own character's appearance. As you can see in Pokemon Shield, I picked the girl character with blonde hair and the mom matches. So definitely best Pokemon ever. Alola mom is getting jealous right now. So let's set out on our journey as I keep getting confused where the door is at. But what is this loading screen? Whoa, that was not expected right there, but here we are, in the first town, which we still don't know the name of. But we definitely know there's a lot of Wooloos around, and Hop waiting to hop to it. I cannot help but keep making that pun, I'm sorry, but <laughs> look at this little buddy! Oh man, I love how they actually have the dialogue boxes pop up like that. <laughs> have a look at you, Orange! That old bag looks like it could pull you over! At least we know that it should hold anything Lee might bring, even if it's as big as a Snorlax. So we already know Lee is, I guess, the nickname he calls his brother Leon, who is the champion of Galar, of course. Oh, Wooloo, but what's it doing there? I don't know, man. <laughs> think something's wrong with that Wooloo. Seems to just keep rolling right into the fence. Hey, you silly Wooloo, I see what you're up to. Don't go using tackle on the fencing. Now, you listen, no going past that fence. No, everyone knows there are scary Pokemon living in the slumbering weald. <laughs> Wooloo's not having it, dude. Just gonna keep bashing right into it. Now that that's taken care of, how about it, Orange? Let's race! Bet I can make it to my house first. What with you lugging about that big old bag? For real, our bag is humongous. I get that it probably has sentimental value since it's our dad's bag, according to Mum. But, little Wooloo, are you, are you okay, dude? Meh. <laughs> I can't help but think that it's actually just going meh, like it doesn't care at all what we think, but welcome to the town of Postwick. I was about to say Potstick, but Postwick? A farming town since days of old where people and their Pokemon live in close harmony. I've never been to the UK, but I feel like there's gonna be sheep everywhere if I do. And already we see so many nice cute little Wooloos around, uh, some that are just popping into existence in the back there, but... The power of science is amazing! Ah yes, this dude! Always in every Pokemon game, we've got the man in the starting town that boasts about the power of science, and now you can battle and trade Pokemon with other people just by walking around! Isn't that super amazing? I suppose so. Guess we'll find out about those features later on in the playthrough. Hey Orange! Hop was looking for you, you know! But no need to go to the next town to find him when he lives right next door, right? Of course, we're blocked from our path. As much as I wish we could get an open world Pokemon game, I guess we're not quite there yet. We still got a couple of tutorials to go through. Although I've heard that in this game, they've reduced the tutorials, or at least they have options for you to skip some of them. So uh, let's see how that goes. We got Hop's mom here. I think she actually has an original design as well. 
Mum, is he here? There you are at last, Hop. Oh, and you've brought along Orange. Hello, dear. Yeah, yeah, but where's Lee? Have you got him crammed in the cupboard? He's still not here yet, for the hundredth time. Honestly, Hop, you must learn some patience. He's probably only just arrived at the station in Wedgehurst. Then that's where I'm going. You know Lee is hopeless with directions. I'll make sure he doesn't get lost on the way. Oh, will you? Yes, that probably is for the best. So proper, Hop's mom. You've got to come with, Orange. You've still never met my big bro, right? You can't miss out on your chance to meet the undefeated champion. I'll wait for you on the next route. All right, Mr. Hop. Always jumping to it. It's a family-sized fridge that can store a lot of food. Yeah, it doesn't look like Hop is eating all that much, though. Or maybe he just runs a lot. Go on with Hop to pick up Leon, won't you, Orange? I know you're the reliable sort. I'll have everything ready for you, a barbecue in the garden by the time you're all back. That sounds pretty delicious. I wonder if we can... Nope, can't read Hop's book or go out of the side door. Ooh, they have a little bowl, though. I wonder what kind of doggy Pokemon uh, Hop's mom has got. Uh, or I guess it's Purloin. <laughs> They're actually cat people. My favorite. Hey, is this his grandpa? To Hop, his brother's a superhero. I can see that from all the trophies and uh, portraits we got on the wall there. They belong to the champion. They even got a little jersey up there. I wonder if that's what he used to win his first title. And then he got like his official champion jersey. But uh, there's books about the champion too. Oh, geez. How long has this man been in the title position, I wonder? Oh, we got Hop's grandma here too. Leon is so busy that he hardly comes home. But I would like to keep his room clean and tidy. So which one is Leon's room? I bet we can guess just from the stuff around it. Oh, uh, there's a bunch of uh, training equipment here that apparently Pokemon can use too. And there's a whole bunch of hats. So I'm pretty sure this has to be Leon's room seeing as uh, Hop doesn't really wear a hat. And there is a portrait of Leon back there too. Uh, books that are hard to understand. Only adults read those types of books. What does that mean? What kind of books are you reading, Leon? And here we've got Hop's room presumably with a Charizard, Machamp, and Gengar up there, the top three most popular Pokemon in Galar. Why are they Kanto Pokemon, though? Uh, there's also a Krogunk statue. I wonder if Krogunk's actually in the game, then. I mean, probably, if they have a statue of it. They wouldn't just include statues of Pokemon if they didn't make it through the Dexit, right? Anyway, uh, let's get outside and go see our rival, as we've got, uh... Well, this area definitely looks familiar. I believe this is where we're going to be getting our starter Pokemon in just a bit, but we've wasted enough time already, so let's head over to our rival Hop, and Hop to, I mean, get a move on. Only remember, Orange, wild Pokemon could come out of nowhere if you walk through patches of tall grass. I've got my Wooloo with me, so I'm ready to battle against wild Pokemon, of course, but not you, Orange, so we'll steer clear of the tall grass as we go. Alright, Mr. Hop, I'll try to be careful. Kind of curious how he already has a Wooloo, though. I wonder how he caught that, uh, considering he doesn't have anything to battle it with. I mean, I always assume that if you have Pokeballs, you can take on, you know, like, Route 1 Wild Pokemon on your own. Let's go and meet Lee at the station. It's dead ahead from here. Whoa! There's quite a huge crowd of people back there. I wonder if they stay, because I know that Hop disappears for some reason, but the crowd is definitely there, so that's kind of weird how Hop's model disappears, but all the people at the town don't. I don't know, I guess we'll have to go up there and find out. I'm not even going to bother going in the grass, because we already know that he's going to stop us and say something like, Hey, you ain't got no wild Pokemon, buddy. Yep, no wandering into that tall grass for you if you've got no Pokemon of your own, mate. Ooh, I like how he calls us mate, though. How very positively British of him. But here we are in Wedgehurst, which is actually a separate town from the one we started off with, even though it's like 10 steps away. A hey, the champ! Strike a pose! And also the hand sign there, that I think is supposed to represent Charizard? I don't really know how that looks like Charizard, but it's cool regardless. Hello, hello, Wedgehurst! Your champion, Leon, is back! I promise I'll keep doing my best to deliver the greatest battles for you all to watch. It's our unbeatable champion! Leon, you and Charizard are the greatest! Freaking Charizard fanboys, dude. Can't believe him. Thank you for that. I hope you'll all carry on training up your Pokemon and never shy from battle. Then come challenge me for the champion title. 
We're on it! We've all been working on our battle skills, just like you've taught us to, Lee! Oh, this is his hometown, right? So these must be like his most diehard fans here. But that Charizard of yours is too strong for the likes of us to take on! Too true that Charizard is blazingly strong, but other Pokémon can be strong as well. That's why I want the strongest of challengers to fill the gym challenge and come battle me! My wish is for Galar's trainers to work together to become the strongest in all the world! Hey, Mr. Char. I love how Leon's cape is flowing in the wind. And his hair too, actually. <laughs> Hop, you can barely see him back there. Hop! Brothers reunited! My number one fan in all the world has come out of his way to pick me up. Look at you, Hop. I reckon you've grown exactly an inch and a quarter since the last time I saw you. Bingo! That's the sort of sharp eye that keeps you undefeated for so long, eh, Lee? And these bright eyes over here. I've got it. You must be orange, am I right? I've heard loads about you from my little brother. I'm the Galar region's greatest ever Pokemon champion, and a massive Charizard fan too. Told you he's a fanboy. People call me the unbeatable Leon. Come on, Lee. And you, Orange. Bet I can beat the both of you back home. Okay, calm down, Hop. <laughs> Always wanting to be the best, isn't he? With a proper rival of his own, I bet he'd push himself to become something truly special. Good thing he's got us, right? Well, everyone, I bid you farewell for today, but don't you fret. I'll always be around to make sure everyone in Galar can have a champion time. That pose, man, I feel like I'm never going to get tired of that. So I hope Leon does it at least 50 more times throughout this playthrough. I'll be keeping count. And we're back in Postwick. Come on, Lee. You promised us a present, so out with it. You brought Orange and me Pokemon. You did, didn't you? I know you must have. Right then. The greatest gift from the greatest champion. It's showtime, everyone! Wait, he actually did bring the starters with him then. For once, we're not getting our starter Pokemon from the Professor. Take a good look, you two. Ooh, we've got like a more proper cutscene here. The Grass-type Pokemon, Grookey. The Fire-type, Scorbunny. And the water type, Sobble. The starters of the Galar region, of course. We are all too familiar with them at this point, especially considering we never got the reveal of their evolutions. And look at them just getting right to the action. Sobble, of course, gets in the water. Scorbunny blazing up the field there. And Grookey up in the tree <laughs> looking for them berries. Oh no, Sobble, that's super effective, bro. What are you doing? Knocking the berry. Oh. <laughs> Poor little Sobble, dude. He got spooked. And Grookey, I guess, calms him down there. <laughs> I expected Grookey to whack him on the head or something. All right, line up, everyone. I love how they all listen to Leon. Like, I guess they're his Pokemon? Which will you choose? Yo, our character actually has expression. Like, he's not just doing a blank stare at them. He actually showed some genuine excitement for once. Go on, you pick first. I've already got my Wooloo after all. I'm still wondering how you got that, Mr. Hop. I think a little bit of a uh, Pokey Salve may have been used there. But now we get to pick our starter Pokemon, of course, between Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble. And a lot of you guys may already know that I am an avid member of the Grookey Gang. Although I really like the other two as well. Oh, look at they smile when you come up to them there. <laughs> the Sobble freak out? Okay, no. Sobble, Sobble's fine for now. I really like Sobble too, actually. I wanted to pick Sobble, but for my first playthrough here, I'm going to go with the grass type Grookey. Hashtag Grookey Gang. That's right, it's soothing, like a nice long walk in the woods. The grass type Grookey, is it? Yeah, but not yet. It's natural to want to consider your options, though going with your instincts is fine as well. You choose your dear partner however you like. Well, if I went with my instincts, it would definitely be Grookey, but I kind of want to see the dialogue for the rest of them, so let's get a close up with Score Bunny next, the fire type bursting with fiery passion. Are you set on that one? Nope. Gotta consider those options, Leon, like you said, my dude. So let's see what uh, Sobble has to say. Or I guess what Leon has to say about it. The water type Sobble, it adapts to anything as surely as water flows. As cute and helpless as Sobble is, I'm gonna have to turn it down because, as I mentioned already, I'm a member of the Grookey Gang, so we're gonna go with the grass type starter. I've always loved monkey Pokemon, Chimchar being one of my favorites of all time. Probably my favorite starter, actually. 
but Grookey may just replace him after this playthrough. We'll have to wait and see what his evolutions have in store, but do we want to give it a nickname? Ooh, I actually didn't even think about what nickname I was going to give any of my Pokemon, so I'm a bit on the spot here. But I think I'm going to settle on naming him after another famous monkey from a cartoon show dear to my childhood, Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls. I was going to go with Jojo, but I feel like that could be easily confused with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And we get a nice high five from our cute little new starter here. So it'll be Grookey for you. Nice one. Who's Hop going with? Sobble, you're mine. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. He picked the one weak to our starter Pokemon. I'm aiming to be the next champion, so be ready. You and I will be doing some serious training. Sobble seems to be excited about it. He was freaking out a little bit ago, so I'm glad he's calmed down a bit, but I bet you will be, Hop. That's why I brought along these Pokemon for you and Orange. So the two of you can battle and train and grow stronger to try to reach me. Aw, poor little score buddy gets left behind. No way. Oh, Leon actually gets him. He'll come with me. Charizard will show you the ropes. He's strict, but real strong and real kind too. That's awesome. And it fits Leon since he's already got another fire type starter there. All right, enough of all this trainer nonsense for one night. Dinner's ready, children. Bring along your Pokemon and let's all eat. Hey, we get a good old fashioned Galarian barbecue. Look at Hop, dude. He is ready for a feastin'. Honestly, I'm kind of ready too. That grilling noise sounds delicious. Guess we got some kebabs? I thought they were hot dogs or something, but hot dogs don't seem very Galarian. What? Why do we need to get healed? We didn't even battle yet. The next day. You spent the whole night with that new partner of yours, right, Hop? You two getting along all right, understanding right one another, maybe even built up a bit of love. Of course I have, Lee. Orange has made fast friends with his Grookey, too. Then listen up, new trainers. Believe in yourself and your Pokemon. If you trust in one another and carry on battling side by side long enough, then someday you might even become worthy rivals for me, the unbeatable champion. What are you looking at him for, Lee? I'm the one who'll be coming to challenge you. If you think Orange might be able to challenge you, then I guess he's my first rival. But I'm not planning to lose to him and miss out on my chance to beat the unbeatable champion. Just having a Pokemon with you doesn't make you a real trainer, you know. Proper trainers raise their Pokemon up to be first rate in battle too. Oh, and you think you're worthy of calling yourself such a proper trainer already, Hop? Guess I'll be the judge of that. Let's see how you handle yourself in a battle against your friend if he's up for it. What do you say? Willing and ready to take Hop on a first ever Pokemon battle of your life? I don't know about that, Leon. I don't think he quite knows our experience with past adventures in Pokemon. Believe in your partner and care for them too, with all your heart. Do those two things and I'm certain you'll learn to choose the moves that suit your Pokemon. And more importantly, to have a champion time battling with them. Is that going to be like his catchphrase, a champion time? This guy is really full of himself, isn't he? <laughs> Looks like everyone's on board, Pokemon and trainers alike. Then let's do this. I've watched every match that Lee's ever had. I've read every book and magazine he left behind at home too. I know exactly what to do in order to win. Let's see if that's true, Mr. Hop, as we get into our first Pokemon battle against Trainer Hop. And I love his battle pose there, smacking his fist right into his other hand. <laughs> a Pokemon battle it is then! I've got two partners with me, whoa! This is new. Get a little cutscene as the battle begins there, and we've got Hop with two Pokemon versus one. So let's see if Mojo can do it against all the odds. And we finally get a little bit of a breather there. Critical hit for our first one? What kind of beginner's luck is that? Clearly Hop has never battled against THE Munching Orange before, because if there's any trainer with a bigger ego than Champion Leon, it's me, buddy. So let's go for another tackle here. Not quite a critical hit this time, but I love how he chimed in to let us know that we got a critical hit there. Like, I'm assuming that's scripted then, otherwise he wouldn't have said anything, right? But I guess I'll have to test it out when I do play through Pokemon Shield, uh, which I didn't get a chance to talk about yet since it's been all cutscenes, but whoa! Mojo already going to level 6 there, okay. Learning Branch Poke 2, which means the battle against Sabo is going to be even easier now. It's not over yet, I've added another trusted ally to my party. And that is of course the water starter Sabo, 
Uh, but we did just learn a grass move, so I'm sorry, little Sobble. I'm actually just gonna go for Scratch because, I don't know, I feel like we can still beat him even with our regular move. Let's find out, actually. He's at level 5, so he's not even gonna have a water move right now. Although, it would be not very effective, so I don't know why he'd go for it. Uh, but what I was going to say was I'm gonna be playing through Pokemon Shield at the same time to show off any major differences in the games. And in that one, I am thinking of choosing Sobble, although I really like uh, Score Bunny as well. I don't know why he's my least favorite of the bunch. I mean, I know some people are going to be mad regardless. The Score Bunny squad is going to be after me for that one. But I really want to see Sobble's final evolution, and I haven't gotten spoiled to any of them yet. So uh, with one final pound, we will take him down and gain another level too. Poor Hop. You beat my two Pokemon with your one. You and that Grookey are too much. Yeah, should have went with Score Bunny, dude. And maybe started off with it too. Well, that was a shock. Guess I know why Lee thought he should give you a Pokemon too. You and your Pokemon all fought hard. Made me almost want to let out Charizard and join in on all the fun. <laughs> okay, come on, Leon. You're gonna... Why don't you pick on someone your own size, dude? Good effort out there, Grookey. Why don't I get you all sorted? Nice and healed up. And Orange, you've got real promise. In fact, I've got a favor to ask you. Be a real rival to Hop, would you? Push him and make the both of you stronger. I already want to get stronger and stronger. You've seen me battle now, Lee, so come on. You've got to let me take on the Pokemon Gyms. You? Join the Gym Challenge? You think you're ready for the single greatest competition in the Galar region? Not putting the cart before the Rapidash there, little brother? If that's really what you want to do, you two have a whole lot to learn about Pokemon. Especially you, your friend Orange, before you think about getting gym badges. Best to think about getting a Pokedex. A trainer's Pokedex helps them learn lots of things about all the Pokemon out there, including their strengths. But it's more than just a collection of data, you know. It's a record of a trainer's love and passion for Pokemon training. Right, right, we get it. Pokedex is then, we're on it. Looks like it's off to the Pokemon Research Lab for you and me, Orange. That's the kind of enthusiasm a trainer needs. I'll let the professor know to expect you. I'm gonna be the next champion, so completing a simple Pokedex will be nothing. Just another page in the tale of my legend. You'd probably better go tell your mom that we're heading out, though. Ah, right. The usual rite of passage in Pokemon games. We gotta ask our mom for permission, because after all, we're only 10. Huh? Did you hear that just now? Yes, I did, and I have a feeling we know exactly what it is. The gate's open, and the Wooloo that was there. Oh, boy. The Wooloo really just kept hitting his head against the fence until he finally broke through. It was tackling the fence pretty hard earlier. You don't think it actually broke through there, do you? But it's off limits. Nobody's supposed to go in there. I remember the professor's granddaughter went in once, and she came back in a real state. And that was nothing compared to the earful she got from the professor afterward. Orange, what do you say? I don't know, man. Right, no one wants to get in trouble, least of all me. But deep down, you want to save that Pokemon too, don't ya? Hope you're ready for anything, because we're going in, Orange! Freaking Hop, influencing us to make bad decisions already. This is why my mom always warned me about making the right friends. And I just realized I'm already saying mom, even though I've never said that in my life. Although I've never really said mom either, because I grew up speaking Spanish, so... I never really got to call my mom, mom, or mom. Anyway, it looks like we're heading off to the slumbering wheel. Despite all the warnings we got, we just can't leave that Pokemon on its own. So in the next episode of Pokemon Sword and Shield, we will begin our adventure proper as we head into the first area of the game that we can actually catch and battle Pokemon in. So actually, before we end things off, I was going to save the game and I noticed some new features here. Not only do we got a very sleek looking menu, uh, but there's also apparently a check map button and what I thought was a loading screen earlier uh, was actually the map at least of the first few areas or wait No, it's actually the whole region. Whoa, this is so stylized. I love uh, the kind of cardboard cutout feel that it's got to it But of course you can see we're in the first town here uh, and you can actually use the d-pad Which might make this a little bit easier to navigate but postwick uh, where we started off and then we've got Route 1, of course, which leads to Wedgehurst, where we met Champion Leon. Um, then we've got Route 2, the Professor's Lab over here. Or, I don't know, actually, if this is the Research Lab, uh, and this is maybe Magnolia's house. Uh, but I guess we'll find out in the next episode, as we've got the 
meetup spot over here. Of course, the wild area. Oh, what the heck? There's so many, like, different points to the wild area. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of spoiling it right now. Do they tell us the names for all the towns, too? Oh, they do. We got Moto Stoke. Stoked to go see that one. Holbury. Uh, Turfield over here. Where's the first gym at, though? Is it actually going to be in Moto Stoke here? The big steampunk city? I'm kind of just seeing how it compares to my map breakdown video I did a while ago. And so far, it seems to be playing out exactly how I thought it would. Well, I had two theories. One was that they would actually allow us to choose after we get to Moto Stoke to go either left or right and take on the water or grass gym over here. But it looks like this game is going to be just as linear as previous Pokemon titles, which is not really a bad thing. I mean, I didn't really expect them to change the formula. I was kind of hopeful that they would, but I wasn't exactly expecting it. Recenter, toggle weather on and off. Oh, you can actually see what weather is in what area right now. So you can see in the wild area, we've got some rain going on over here in uh, Axwell Lake and some snow apparently all the way up here. That's crazy, dude. Doesn't seem like the weather changes in other areas though, or maybe it does. I mean, it's snowing up here, that, but that's probably because it's a snowy area. Yeah, we got sun all the way up through here though, so... That's pretty neat how you can actually check the weather as well, because I think in the wild area, the Pokemon you find depend on the weather. So uh, you can quickly check that out and run over to, you know, the area a certain Pokemon you might want to catch is at. But that is finally going to do it. Thank you all so much for watching this first episode, and I hope you'll join me on the rest of the journey. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed and have a nice day. I'll catch you in the next one.